Hey everybody, welcome back to Expedition Homestead. On today's episode, we are going to be talking about electroculture and bringing higher energy force into your garden. Yes, that could be a real thing and that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna be setting up electroculture stakes and some big electroculture antennas in our garden today. You're not gonna wanna miss it, stay tuned. So very first electroculture stake that we have in the garden is right here. We are going to set up a total of four electroculture stakes and antennas in the garden, set up in a very specific manner. The very first one we have twisted all along this copper piping coming up in a clockwise manner from the very bottom. We have the copper pipe pounded into the ground about a foot and a half then the actual copper line, even though it's making contact with the pipe, is also in the soil about a foot. Going clockwise all the way up and then expanding up at the top at the antenna. The antenna, make note, is facing north. We have this facing due north. So the opening of that antenna right here, if you look right above it, this way is north. That is very critical in order to make sure that we are capturing the dielectric fields that are all around us. That's the direction that it's got to be pointed is true north, right? If you're off a little bit here and there, I don't think it's going to matter. But what this is, is dielectric fields. So if you're familiar with C.P. Steinmetz or Nikola Tesla, C.P. Steinmetz was actually Nikola Tesla's mentor. So if you thought Nikola Tesla was smart, you should check out C.P. Steinmetz. Absolute, absolute genius for his time. And turns out, centuries later, we are slowly finding and becoming privy to the fact that what he was studying has validity, complete validity to it. So that is the fact that there's dielectric fields all around us at all places, all times. These translongitudinal forces basically are what energy and electricity is derived from. So when you take the magnetic field of the earth or a magnetic field using permanent magnets, crossing it with the dielectric field, so that's what copper windings are in a motor. So you've got the, the stator and then the windings of the motor, that's gonna be creating the dielectric field. So when the magnetic field and dielectric field is crossed, that is what creates electricity. So it is found that by creating these antennas, extending up into the atmosphere, you can harvest little bits of electricity. You can create a flowing system of energy within the soil of your garden. So that's what we are trying to do here. So there's all kinds of studies on it. Some are a little bit more wonky than others, but some have gotten great results from it. So that's what I'm going to show you today is exactly how we set ours up. And we're gonna be keeping track on if we notice any difference, if we feel any difference, if, if I can sit here and just feel the energy that is flowing through these antennas or not, and, and show you guys that process along the way. So the very first one, copper piping all the way down. What matters, it doesn't matter truly if it's copper or not, but you just need some sort of conductive material. The more conductive, the better going down in here. So this is our very first one in our garden. And then the second one that I've got set up is right over here. Then what I've done to make my earthen coil, so what I would call my negative, so energy that we are receiving from the earth, I just use the baseball bat so it's slightly tampered towards the inside. And then I will use this and point it in the opposite direction of the very first coil that we made. And since I am trying to have this one have least resistance to the ground, I actually got this copper bus bar here, which is going to work incredibly well for that side of my electroculture setup. So we've got this pounded about 12 inches into the soil. Now this vortex is going in the opposite direction and still opening up to the north. You want it to point due north when doing this because that is going to be the field perturbations that you are collecting from the ether, right? So this one right here, 
you can see it's going counterclockwise all the way down into the soil about eight inches down for the actual copper wire and then the copper piping is going about 12 inches down into the soil there so counterclockwise then this one is going clockwise and then i'm going to get two more antenna right up here to cr kind of create a initial vortex back on this side i i know if, if you're new to electroculture it doesn't make sense but i have studied electrical theory and um the studies of cp steinmetz for years cp steinmetz was nikola tesla's mentor if you don't know him absolutely genius cp steinmetz theorized and essentially has now proven you know years and years and years later centuries later we found out that his studies are true that the ether the dielectric ether and magnetic ether is what kind of creates the entire atmosphere so the dielectric ether is is the universe it's everything around us it is um a, a a force that is always present everywhere. So this is going to collect the dielectric ether and combine it with the magnetic fields of the earth. So the earth has a magnetic field to it. So that is combining and taking these two and ultimately harvesting a positive energy in order for the plants to grow. So you have a high life force, high energy output getting put into your garden through collecting these on the ether. Now, if you if you look at the fields, essentially it's a bunch of um, uh, translogitudinal forces that come across in vortexes going in different directions. That's why these um, that's why these coils are all going to be in different directions because we want to not just collect one of them. We want to collect all of the different um, the vortexes. So like if you look at the, the, the chakras, the energy force that is coming through the dielectric magnetic atmosphere and magnetic earth, we need to collect both of those at the same time. So it is truly able to go where it needs to. It's absolutely incredible. Um, so we've got these first two set up. Let's get our higher towers back over on this side and um, then I'm, I'm pretty sure this is going to be an incredible setup. I am really excited to see how it does this year, especially since we're going like at an all out raw process with the whole garden this year. If you haven't checked out some of my other videos of me explaining what we're doing exactly, I think you'll find it really incredible. So um, let's get those other two towers up right now. All right, electroculture buddies. Again, this is my very first time doing this, but I'm excited to see what the results look like because there is a lot of people online starting to do this. Soaring high at just about 15 feet, we have our Luigi Egdina spiral up there. So we've got the copper piping wound with electrical wire. So I have three strands, two insulated, one uninsulated copper wire going across um, in a clockwise fashion, continuing clockwise up, but then it twists to counterclockwise once it gets to the bottom here. That's this Luigi Angina circle or uh, spiral. And then I have another one lower. So we've got one right at 15 feet, one at about 10 feet. And then right here, this other spiral is at about uh, four and a half feet maybe. So this is a Luigi spiral. We have uh, copper rods on both sides. Sorry, not copper rods, copper tubing on both sides. Going down to the ground about two feet. And uh, the reason why I did the Luigi spirals on these is because this um, catches field perturbations from both directions basically so and the other reason why I thought it made sense to stagger these is I don't want them on the same exact plane so that way I'm able to maximize how much of the ether dielectric ether that I'm capturing and hopefully bringing down right into the soil here so we have our very first counterclockwise spiral our big tall copper spiral right there going clockwise 
and then a Luigi spiral there, another Luigi spiral there. So between all of these, from what I'm reading and what I'm gathering, we should be able to cover, you know, about a 250 foot area of positively flowing energy high soil. I specifically love the way this one turned out. I think it's going to do a very, very good job at it. One of the important things though on all of these spirals is that it is opening to the north. So you want to make sure that this is the polarity is north and south there where this opening is going because of the way the dielectric fields work. All right, so I am already feeling all the positive energy flowing into my garden. <laughs> Not really, but I'm excited just because it's cool. I mean, I think theoretically it does make sense. It has been proven in the past that we can collect energy from the atmosphere. So whether or not deriving this energy and pulling it down into the soil is going to ultimately help the plant growth that I have here in the garden, that is the true question that has yet to be seen. We just got this set up here. So this is how it's done though. I, I have done a lot of research on it. Wanna make sure I'm doing it right. This is how it's done. So some people, and in the past, during the large scale studies, they would also take a ring around the entire garden as well in order to increase the amount of uh, electricity and energy, that dielectric force that is being harvested from the atmosphere. So we could also do that, but um, you know what? I, I'm just gonna keep it at this because I think having this 15 foot tall tower right here plus a 10 footer and then this right here and then our massive substation bus bar right there. If, <laughs> if this doesn't work, then um, I'm just not really looking forward to doing a ton of work in my garden after that point. So let's kind of tiptoe into this thing. I would say the setup is pretty incredible the way it is. I'm hoping that we get results. My, my mind is in the right place because I am an electrician, been an electrician for 10 years. And like I said before, I'm very passionate about C.P. Steinmetz, Nikola Tesla, and um, the actual theories behind the dielectric and magnetic fields and forces that are all existing at all places at all times. I think and it's, a, it's an incredible wonder that God has laid these laws into the universe itself. So let's collect some of it while it's here. We might as well do our best to try it. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you found today's video interesting. Uh, this is step one of our electroculture journey. We'll see you in the next episode.